Hello and welcome to our service on Sunday the 9th of May, the 6th Sunday of Easter. Firstly, a big thank you to everybody who supported our sale last weekend with cakes and bric-a-brac, raising money for St Paul's Roof. We raised over £300 and we'll be continuing with these sales the first Saturday of each month. We have now been producing our online services every week for over a year, starting shortly after the first lockdown. Now that we are welcoming congregations back into our churches for services, we are looking at how best to continue with online worship. It is unlikely we can continue in our present format now that we have resumed church services, but we would like to provide something for those unable to get to a church and also online worship additional to our church services. At the end of this service is a link to a very short survey which will help plan and we would be very grateful if you can complete this. Our online services continue in the current format until the end of May and I hope you enjoy today's service. And our collect for today. God our Redeemer, you have delivered us from the power of darkness and brought us into the kingdom of your Son. Grant that as by his death he has recalled us to life, so by his continual presence in us he may raise us to eternal joy. Through Jesus Christ your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen.
The reading today is taken from John chapter 15, starting at verse 9. As the Father has loved me, so I have loved you. Now remain in my love. If you obey my commands, you will remain in my love, just as I have obeyed my Father's commands and remain in his love. I have told you this so that my joy may be in you and that your joy may be complete. My command is this, love each other as I have loved you. Greater love has no one than this, that he laid down his life for his friends. You are my friends if you do what I command. I no longer call you servants because the servant doesn't know his master's business. Instead, I have called you friends. For everything that I learned from my Father, I have made known to you. You did not choose me, but I chose you, and appointed you to go and bear fruit, fruit that will last. Then the Father will give you whatever you ask in my name. This is my command. Love each other. This is the word of the Lord. would save his ageing parents from the perils of eating too much chocolate at Easter, so he bought us a book instead. It's obviously a long time since he's bought chocolate Easter egg, or he'd realise there's not enough chocolate in there to enlarge the waist of a caterpillar, let alone his, his parents. So this is the book, Finding Jesus. It's a Christian equivalent of Where's Wally. It's full of pages of crowds of people and somewhere in these pages is Jesus, if you can find him. Well, I have searched and searched loads of times since I've had it and I suppose I've found about half of them. It's not that easy as it sounds. And it's a bit like the old milk tray um, advert. He can pop up, pop up anytime, anywhere, any place in these books. But if we did find him amongst our lives, would we know how to recognise him? It was once said, if Jesus came to a church service today, he would be most likely being ignored 
and leave without anyone realising who he was. Possibly because no one would bother to speak to him. And anyway, we would not expect to find Jesus among us. We do not go looking for Jesus. He has to come looking for us. And when he does, we're not readily able to accept him or want to. The disciples had no problem finding Jesus. Andrew turned to him immediately and so did his brother Peter. Philip followed Jesus, but Nathaniel needed convincing that Jesus was the real thing. Paul persecuted him until he encountered Jesus on the road to Damascus but immediately changed his life. Many of the crowds listening to Jesus realised he was someone special. I suppose it was easier for them as he stood out from the crowd by the way he spoke, the vast knowledge he had of the history of the Jews and the teaching from the prophets, his calm approach to people and of course his healing miracles. It was quite clear this was no ordinary prophet. And his one overriding message was of love from God to his people and from Jesus to his followers and an encouragement to people to love one another. Of all the commandments given to the Jews by God, it was the two directly concerned with love that Jesus spoke of time and time again to love God above all things and to love one another as you would love yourself. We can encounter Jesus when we least expect it. The problem is knowing if it is the real Jesus and not someone or some look-alike, appearing to behave the same way, saying the right things, but having their own interpretation of the true message. We have to be cautious of the people who use biblical text as a convenient way of putting moral pressure on people to do things. Very often throughout history, biblical text has been taken out of context and used in ways that would have horrified Jesus. The reading this morning from John's Gospel is a case in point. Jesus says, this is my commandment. Love one another as I have loved you. No love has greater than this than to lay down his life for someone else. You are all probably aware of how this was used in the first war to persuade young men to enlist and end up sacrificing their lives because of the egos of senior officers. Now I'm not going to stray into an anti-war lecture but use this as an example of an illustration of how easily text can be manipulated to suit a person's ideals and take away the original meaning. I think Jesus was telling them of his own sacrifice the next day when he would be crucified. He is doing it out of love for mankind and for our salvation. I'm not sure he expected his disciples to do the same. The reading this morning is part of the five chapters in John's Gospel, giving a detailed account to the last evening Jesus spent with his disciples. In these chapters, Jesus outlines the essence of what is to take place and resources God will give them. We are like eavesdroppers on a very holy conversation of the last words of Jesus to his disciples. If you had a chance to speak to your loved ones when you knew you would be killed the next day, what would you say? Would it be trivial stuff like, well, the will's in the top left-hand drawer of my desk and so is the key to the safe and make sure they give you, cat, you give the cat plenty to eat? Or would you be able to talk to them and give them advice and guidance for their future without you? John is the only one who gives us an idea of what Jesus said to his disciples. 
Jesus speaks of his gifts to them of peace, of love, of joy, of the gift of the Holy Spirit, and promises to come again to receive them to himself, that where he is, so they may be also. Jesus doesn't focus on his needs, or what will happen to him, or his concern. All his concern is on his disciples, to give them courage to face what is ahead. Jesus knows that they will be in turmoil, and gives them reassurance that he will be with them at all times. Not physically, but his spirit of love will be with them because he knows that is the purpose for which he was sent, to complete his father's business on earth. One of the reasons the disciples managed to pull off the greatest growth of faith ever was by pulling together. They worked, prayed, stayed together. You cannot be a solitary Christian. We are meant to be a family to live, worship and pray together, and we cannot go it alone. Prayer is our strongest point, as it leads us directly to Jesus and to God. And they respond if we allow them. The love and concern Jesus had for his disciples, he also has for us. He was willing to sacrifice his, love, his life for all of us, and for salvation of the world. That is the true Jesus, and it was his love for mankind that led him to make that sacrifice. A false Jesus would not be willing to make sacrifices because they do not have the love of God or the immense capacity to share love with others. To find the true Jesus in the crowd, all you need is love and that makes me sound like a very bad Beatle record all you need is love and to finish it off with a quote from donkey in the film Shrek feel the love when you let the true Jesus into your life you can feel the love that comes from him when the church lets Jesus into its community and not the ideas of some of the members you can feel the love of Jesus and of God in the building. That is why you cannot really be a solitary Christian. You need to feel the warmth of love that comes from worshipping in a community, to pray together, to worship together. Next Thursday is Ascension Day, when Jesus completes his ministry on earth and returns to his Father. He goes confident, confident that his disciples were ready to carry on his ministry. They might have felt totally inadequate and unfit for the task, but Jesus knew and trusted them. We might feel a loss ourselves on Thursday. Easter is over. Jesus is not here. But he is, but he is always and will be here with us if we learn to love and have faith in him and trust him. He never failed his disciples and has not failed since. He is the true Jesus in the crowd. The book, as I said, is titled Finding Jesus. Well, it's quite easy really. We find Jesus in our hearts, because that is where he lives. But he might also be hidden in a crowd, waiting to meet you. Amen.
This Sunday is Rogation Sunday, when traditionally prayers were said asking God to bless the fields and the crops that were sown, asking for a good harvest. Farming, like many other things, has changed over the years, and we are more aware again of the need for farmers to work with nature by good practice and caring for the soil and surrounding habitats. We pray that government will reward the farmers who show care for the countryside, and we pray that farmers are helped to do so. Father God, we pray for our farmers. They have a physically and mentally demanding job and can feel alone or unsupported. Weather affects what is grown, and we have had some unusual variation this year, just as last. We pray for all those affected by the weather, not just those who grow crops or raise animals, but those who have businesses which rely on outside trade. We give thanks for the technology and science which enable us to be at least warned of possible damage. We pray for safety and protection for ourselves. Simply, in this week's Gospel, Jesus commands us to love each other. Father, we pray for those in need of love, for those left empty and afraid to reach out to others, for those who have faced painful rejection at every turn, for those who have never known what it means to be loved unconditionally and find it hard to offer love to others or to receive it themselves. May the love of Christ bring them healing and hope. Lord, we pray for those whose consciences have been dulled and who have no sense of right and wrong those for whom kindness, love and compassion are signs of weakness in a world where only the strong are allowed to succeed. We pray for those who give no thought to the pain and distress that they cause. Lord, fill the earth with your love. Father, we pray for those whose love for their neighbour takes our breath away for those prepared to risk everything to care for the sick and dying, the hungry, the lost, the broken. We pray for those whose love for others is a reflection of their love for you. For those who do not realise how wonderful their care they give is, or how important they are to those they help. May the love of Christ Bring them healing and hope. Lord, we pray for those struggling in families and relationships where love seems missing. For those unsure of commitment or if truth is being told. We pray for children caught in the adult crossfire of anger and disappointment. We pray for those who ache for a loved one lost, but don't see love in another's eyes, and those who simply yearn for a partner or friend to share love with. Father, fill the earth with your love. Father, we pray for people we know, particularly those people in need of your healing touch. We name them to you now in a silence. We pray for situations that concern us and the people we love and care for. We pray for ourselves and all that we will face in this coming week.
have no fear, be in no doubt, you are not alone. Open your eyes to the presence of God. Open your ears to his word for you and know he is guiding your feet. Receive his peace and know his presence and be filled with the Spirit. Confess that Jesus is Lord and live in his love. Amen. Let's say the Lord's Prayer together. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and for ever. Amen. And the presence of the Spirit gladden our hearts and bring us peace this day and forevermore. Amen. <laughs> 